Welcome back. You're listening to Houston Real Estate Radio. I'm your host, Shannon Register, and every week we bring you news and information you can use on your next real estate transaction. If you've got a real estate question, give us a call, 281-882-8088. 281-882-8088. We'll be happy to answer your real estate questions right here on the air. This week, we've devoted our show to back to school. All the students now in Houston are back in school, and it's an exciting time. We had so many houses being purchased over the summer, like we always do. Summertime seems to be the time to buy, and so many families moving into the area, and now their children are, are excited to be in these new schools. A lot of things happening. So we, we're talking to superintendents from around the Houston area, get different points of view on what's going on. So I'm really excited to have um, Mr. Fraley on. He's the superintendent of Katy ISD, and Katy is a growing area, so lots to talk about over there. Welcome to the show, Mr. Fraley. Thanks, Shannon. Glad to join you. You know, so much going on over there. I know you've been with the district eight years now, and um, back in 2010, you led the district in a successful bond referendum that added um, that, that was in the process of adding new campuses, uh, five new campuses, so really growing the district. How many of those campuses have been built yet? Well, they've all been built. We all had the last okay. two opening this year. Oh, good, good. So grand okay. openings going on. That's exciting. Yes. <laughs> so what would you say to all of those home buyers who just purchased in KDISD and they have their, their nervous school children going in, starting new high schools, new elementary schools? What would you say to those parents about the district? Well, the first thing is they made a very wise decision. Mm-hmm. Uh, very proud of being KDISD. I have two children of my own who have been through the system, two have, and one still in the system. Uh, Katy is a place that's known for uh, a lot of good things. It's known for quality schools, which includes not only top-notch curriculum and, and, and instruction, but also things that kids can be involved with, such as the fine arts, uh, academic clubs, uh, athletics, and things like that. And we have a great community uh, support system for our children. And it's just, it's just a lot of good things are happening very well out here in Katy. Does, let me ask you about something. Uh, does Katy offer summer school for students who were a little bit behind last year? Do they offer summer school? Because I've found that a lot of student, a lot of um, school districts are not offering that anymore. Did you guys offer it? We have maintained it for credit restoration as well as for original credit for kids who want to kind of get ahead. Oh, that's good. So AP classes and that kind of thing? Correct. Wow, that's great. I, th- I think that's good. I mean, it's, you know, I think a lot of times um, the, the schools don't want to hold children back anymore, but yet you don't want them to go in the new school year already behind. So I think that's great that you guys offer some summer programs as well. So lots of great things going on in the district. I know you guys are growing. Obviously, you put in five new schools. That's a lot. And uh, that, that's a lot. That's a lot. What are your priorities, your top three priorities for this school district? Well, the main one right now is we're growing by about 3,000 students a year. So we have to find a way to manage that growth. And here in Texas, you really have very limited options there for public schools. And the main one for us is having what we call bond referendums. Mm -hmm. And so our Board of Trustees just called uh, a rather large package, actually, uh, to build uh, six new schools and renovate uh, completely six additional schools. Uh, And so that will be before the voters. It's coming November. And uh, that is uh, one of our responses to the growth that we have. We'll top... 70,000 students this year. So that's a new bond for this November? Correct. Okay, and that will be for more campuses? Correct. We have six uh, brand new schools uh, in that package, as well as campus renovations for six campuses. Now, are those elementary schools, or do those include high schools as well? We have one high school, two junior highs, and three elementary schools uh, in this package. Wow, that's fantastic. For new construction. Now, the five that you recently opened with the last bond, were those all elementary, or were some of those middle? No, we had uh, a high school in there, a a junior high, and and, uh, three elementary schools. Well, I know you all have a lot of housing areas uh, being developed in Katy. And, you know, the more houses that go in, the more schools you're going to have to have. That there's a direct connection <laughs> with that. Uh, visited with uh, some of your colleagues, realtors, last week, and we talked about the fact that uh, you can build a neighborhood faster than we can get resources to build a school. Yeah. And so we have to find a way to bridge that by using uh, different things, such as uh, portable buildings, sometimes uh, uh, attendance boundary modifications. But without a doubt, parents are moving here in droves, uh, and we say it's not because of the rolling hills in Katy. Mm-hmm. Very, very flat land, but over and over again, the research shows they choose the school district. How many students are in your school district? We will top 70,000 this year. Uh, We ended last year about 60, just just shy of 68,000. But we'll we'll hit almost 71,000, we think, this year, uh, probably in the next few weeks, actually. 
Wow. All right. Well, it's exciting going into the new school year. I, I know that you are positioning for growth. I mean, you have to, you know, it's, it's so important. And uh, the other superintendents I've talked with as well, I mean, they're, they're really having, having to position for growth all over the Houston area because there's really very few parts of Houston that are not growing and developing um, both with residential and also with commercial. And, you know, it just goes hand in hand wherever you're going to employ people. You're going to have to have houses. My wife and I, we love Houston, and, and Houston is doing quite well uh, uh, in terms of its economy. And I'm very proud of my colleagues uh, who are in the other neighboring school districts. Uh, they're doing a, quite a good job, I think, of working uh, to provide a qual- quality experience for our students and giving our parents some real options. And, and I know that Katie is right there at the top with them. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about um, some of the things that your school district is known for. You mentioned fine arts. Um, what are some of the programs that peop- that new buyers moving into the area need to be familiar with? Well, most of our folks, they do their research in advance, and we have parents who move here. Uh, they know that academically we, we're strong. But a lot what of folks are y'all realize, rated? Uh, well, the highest rating you get in Texas is called MET Standard, okay. and uh, we, we have a rating of MET Standard. In about 90% of our, we have like a score of 90%. And the state average is 77 percent. Okay. So we've always outperformed uh, the state and really, and really the region as well. Uh, we're very, very competitive here. You're very proud uh, of that, I can tell. That's good. <laughs> I, I am indeed because uh, it, it's about our students and our teachers. Uh, they do a great job work with our, our students and teachers do. And uh, probably the biggest thing I call our secret sauce, uh, our parent volunteers. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have over 17,000 registered uh, parent volunteers, and they donated over 800,000 volunteer hours last year alone. Wow, that's great. Now, when you say they're volunteering, are these volunteering to, to put on events and, and do stuff with kids, or are they like volunteering and tutoring and, and putting on academic programs? It is A to Z. Okay. Uh, they go from, from bulletin boards to chaperoning to setting up for the band, setting up for the, for the drill team. Uh, they do tutoring. We have mentors for our students. Uh, they do fundraising. Uh, they'll, they'll sometimes substitute in the classroom to give the teacher a break, or, or they'll have teacher celebrations. Uh, it's just amazing the creativity uh, our parents have and the appreciation that they show uh, for our staff. It, 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 truly, it truly is our secret sauce. Are you seeing very many students dropping out in high school? Um, students tend to drop out long before high school. High school is when you document it, but many of them check out long before that. So one of the things that we're trying to do in Katy, we call it our BEAM project, and this is our Believing Everyone's attitude matters, and they're just trying to have, find a way to get, get every student connected with an adult to have an environment where the kids feel safe and supported. And if when that happens, we do think that they'll be more successful, and when they're more successful and they feel connected, that, that they'll stay in school. Do you find that um, with dropout rates, do you find that they're more, um, more prevalent among you know, special needs students or low-income students, or is there any way to, to pinpoint who those students are going to be? Uh, the, the, what you can tell students who are not connected typically are the ones, uh, be it special needs, be it uh, low income, whatever it is, academic, they don't feel a part of the school community. Mm-hmm. Uh, they do tend to drop out. And that's why in Katie, one of our biggest dropout prevention programs involve our extracurricular activities, uh, be it our band, be it our performing arts, theater arts, be it our athletic programs. Have something These for These things have been proven to keep kids connected, and that is the best dropout prevention program that yeah, I think plugging kids into something is, is huge and meaningful for them and, and certainly helps them in other areas of their life. You know, if, if they can plug into something, they're happy, whether even if it's football, whatever it is, you know, the, then they tend to do better academically. Absolutely, absolutely. Do you guys have very many private schools that you uh, work with? We have about 2% of our uh, student population, student age, uh, age, student age population, are in private schools. Okay. And uh, what I've made very widely known is that uh, we're all in, in, this, in the child uh, uh, raising business. Absolutely. And be it public school, private school, charter school, home school, I really, it really sure. doesn't matter to me as long as we're serving kids well. So we're partnering with them in any way that we can. Uh, sometimes we'll, we'll share federal funds that are targeting uh, student populations that may be in a private school, so we'll share some of those things with them. Uh, and just mainly it's just being available for the conversation and letting them know that we're not in competition. Mm-hmm. It's all about working together to Supporting raise our children. each other, yeah. Yep. Well, we appreciate you coming and being a part of the show today. Uh, we talked to some other superintendents, and we're going to talk to a few more when we come back from the break. Thank you, Dr. Fraley with KDISD. We enjoyed talking with you and appreciate you coming on the show this week. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. All right, good luck this football season. Thank you. All right.
We'll be right back here on Houston Real Estate Radio.